So we start standing. So get your place ready and please have maybe two cushions if you have two meditation cushions. Um, if you are ha having a hard time sitting on your heels, for example, then it's nice if you have two cushions, as you can see Rudra here uh, sitting on his heels. Um, so if you have two or need to get enough, it could also be a folded blanket or something that um, you can sit on a little higher. And then we start standing up as usual in hormone yoga right away with warm ups and just waiting for you guys to get ready. After sitting, <laughs> you can shake out your legs a little bit. So the warm ups start right away with the Bastrika breathing. So it will be with each movement, a strong inhalation, exhalation, moving your abdomen out and in for massaging this whole area. And of course, increasing the amount of prana in your system. So first one is the usual one, which we start with shoulder exercise here. So you interlock your fingers, push down your palms, have a nice firm stand, feet comfortably apart. Have a nice firm lower back, maybe tuck your tailbone a little bit. So it's just the arms moving in the shoulder joint. And we do it with the breathing, starting down here and then inhale up, exhale down, inhale, exhale. And we'll do about 10. And you move your abdomen out and in every time you inhale out. And then as you exhale in. And last one. And the next one is side to side, which you also know from the regular practice. So you bring your arms up, palms are facing out. Again, maybe a little firmness in your lower back, squeezing your buttocks a little bit. And we are swinging from side to side, starting to the right with inhalation. Exhale in the center and then inhale right, exhale left. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And you can find your own pace. Some will breathe and move slower. Others maybe a little faster. Always feel that your body is fine and safe. And then we come back to center and start the same movement with inhaling to the left. So have a good stretch here, exhale, and then inhale left, exhale right. Inhale, exhale. Two more. And then come back to center. And you can bring these interlocked hands behind your head and we do samba also same as in the menopause practice. You bring your feet maybe a little more apart, bend your knees, and then it's swinging the hips. Yeah, like this, and we do it with the breathing. So you exhale here and then to the right. Inhale, left, exhale. Right, left, inhale, exhale. Abdomen out, abdomen in. Really move soft. Move all the muscles around and running through the pelvis this way. And if you wear boxer shorts as a man, you can ring the bells. <laughs> Coming back to center and then exhale here. And we start to the left, inhale, right, exhale, left, right, Inhale, exhale with Bastrika. So it can be audible. And coming back to center. Wonderful. You can release your arms. And then we are lying down on the floor and we do recline leg stretch. I show you even though you know it, <laughs> most of you. So it's holding the big, um, the big toe. Yeah, big toe <laughs> with index finger and thumb and the rest of the toes with all the other fingers. And like this, you're lying on the back 
So maybe you lie down first and then grab your toes. And if you cannot reach your toes, you just hold your shin. And then you stretch out one leg and there's no special breathing. So just normal breathing and you count to three and you feel the stretch on the inside and the back of your straight leg. And then you come back to center and do the same to the other side. And you can do this in your own pace, maybe five times to each side in total. And the arms are always in the middle, the knees out. You can do it in your own pace. While I readjust the camera a little bit. So it's about stretching the back of your legs and the inside of your legs. And when you finished your five times to each side, you can slowly release your knees and you can rock yourself up, maybe rolling front and back, massaging your back a little bit and then coming up to sitting. And in sitting, we do twisting. And uh, usually we call it flying hair, but in the uh, andropause practice, Dina calls it twisting, maybe because most men <laughs> don't have long hair. <laughs> so uh, you interlock your hands like a hook and then uh, sit comfortably in a sukhasana, like a comfortable um, cross-legged position. And if that doesn't work, again, I can change my position. Maybe Rudra stays as he is, so you see both sitting positions. You can also sit like this um, on a cushion. And then you do the twisting with the Bastrika breathing. So we start to the right, exhale in center, and then inhale right, exhale left. Inhale, exhale. Make sure your abdomen is moving with your breath. Keep your eyes maybe gently open to not get dizzy and do it as dynamic or gentle as your back is happy about it. And then we come back to center. Take a moment to, and then we start to the left with the inhalation. So exhale in center and then Inhale left, exhale right. And last one. And relax your hands. Take a moment to get out of the maybe a little dizziness. And it's always, you can do seven, you can do 10 or 12. It's not like it has to be exact, but that's a good, a good number. Seven to 10 is a good number. Good, then after this, you can all come to the position that I am in. Um, so in her underpaws book, Dina recommends the sitting hand in this position. Um, maybe um, taking or um, recognizing that um, maybe men that are a little more aged and are new to the practice have difficulty in sitting cross-legged because in the menopause practice, we do um, the sitting cat cross-legged, but here we do it in this position. So this also gives you a, a new variation for your um, menopause practice or for the female participants. So we just have our hands on our legs and you can have one cushion, two cushions, and you could even do it on a chair. Now, if you have people who cannot sit on the floor at all, here you just use a chair, also possible, sitting on the edge of a chair. So what we do is we round the back, exhaling, and open the chest, inhaling. And it's important that the head stays fairly stable. It doesn't have to be a stiff neck 
but you don't want to jerk your head front and back. That's important. And we do it with Bastrika. So we start with inhalation, opening the chest, which is quite natural, right? So that would be also the natural flow of breath that we would choose. So we also use this as the first round in, for Bastrika here. And with exhaling, we do the round back. So we start neutral, exhale here, and then with the breathing, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So it's tilting your pelvis front and bringing it back. And this way your spine moves. And try to make the in and the out breath um, around the same force and then come back to center. So second round is inhalation being round, which is kind of counterintuitive and exhalation extending the spine. So again, we start with neutral, exhale here, and then it's round back inhale, stretch back exhale. So it needs a little bit of concentration to work the abdomen in the proper opposite way now. Still as you inhale, your abdomen goes out, even though you are squeezing your tummy with your round back. So it's also a lot of learning to control your body, coming back to center controlling individual muscles and areas of your body. Then we do a third round and in the third round, we retain the breath. So if you feel it's a lot on your back, just do it, you know, not so intensely, just make a small movement. It is said that the, the twist and the sitting cat is also very good for the um, adrenal glands. So we hold the breath and then do as many movements as we can and stop when we need to exhale. So you don't need to force it. It's not a competition. Just take it very easy. <laughs> we need to, <laughs> ooh. <laughs> so we inhale and then move. And whenever you feel your out breath comes, just end the practice and take a nice long exhalation. So having done this, um, maybe it's a good moment to again repeat that whenever uh, we do breath retention and we suffer from high blood pressure. It's important that you only fill your lungs to kind of three quarter breath. So never full lungs to have so much pressure in the system, a three quarter breath, and then it's perfectly fine. So I get this question quite a lot. Is um, high blood pressure a counterindication for this practice? No, it is not. But when you hold your breath, don't fill your lungs completely, just fill them about three quarters and then, and then do whatever you, you're doing. Okay, so we have one more exercise as a warm up, and that's new, that doesn't show up in the um, menopause practice. And I show you first, and then we can do it together. So it's you have your feet apart, it's kind of a one sided windshield wiper so you're moving one hip joint and we start with the right hip joint having the feet kind of far apart moving your right knee with a just very normal natural breath exhaling to your left foot so it's kind of an internal rotation and the hip can come up a little bit and then bringing it again up with your inhalation and then again exhale just a normal breath and inhale and we do that three times and then do the other leg so we can do it together now you can position yourself starting with the right leg bringing the right knee towards your left foot as far as it wants to sink down here so it's kind of an adduction and rotation in your hip 
and then bringing it back up. Exhale, you can let it come down. So it's pulling on a lot of muscles here around your hip socket. And one more time. And then we do the other side. The left knee comes to the right foot. And the right knee just stays where it is. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale. It's kind of nice because in yoga we do a lot of abduction and external rotation with butterfly poses, sitting poses. So it's kind of nice to have the opposite movement here, pulling on these different structures, tissues. And that's all the warm ups that we have here in our Andrew Pause practice. And you can come up to sitting. And the first asana, which we will now combine not only with Bastrika, but also with the circulation of energy, will be um, a well, kind of a wide frog that is sitting back and stretching out forward. So this will be the position. And while you are positioning yourself as you can in this pose, you could also use maybe a cushion if it's difficult or two to lie under your chest. So just see how you can be here. And then we will do the circulation of energy after we did Bastrika, which will contain the following steps. I just repeat them for those who are new. We will inhale. Again, if you have high blood pressure, only three quarter breath, retain the breath. Then we bring the tip of the tongue to the upper palate like this. This stimulates an acupressure point that brings the prana flow to the nose where we concentrate and collect the prana. Again, this is an energy center. So we are collecting the prana here, concentrating here. We do mula bandha, squeezing the pelvic floor muscles and pulling them up inside. This will increase the flow of prana up to where we collect it, the energy center here in the face. And then I say change concentration. And now we are focusing on the testes or the females can focus on the ovaries. And you just imagine that the prana flows into the gland strengthening and activating whatever is needed here. So that's what we do. So you can come down, stretch forward, open knees, arms to the front. And then you exhale and begin. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Continue your bastrika in your own pace, moving your abdomen. And then seven to 10 breaths, last exhalation. Inhale and retain your breath. Bring the tongue to the upper palate. Focus on the tip of the nose. Do mula bandha, squeeze your pelvic floor, and pull it inward. And then change the concentration to the testes, to the prostate, to the ovaries, if you like, and exhale slowly. You can take one more deep breath. Usually I take another breath in the first one or two asanas. So we come into that mode of feeling into the body, bringing awareness to different body parts. And then you can slowly come up. So the dynamic part now of um, the practice, the asanas, the kriyas are done quite uh, fast one after the other. So there's not much resting, relaxing feeling that will all, all come at the end of the class. So now second is um, the um, up frog kind of. <laughs> so you're on your tippy toes and the knees are apart. And if you can, you lean down and push your knees apart with your elbows. 
You can also balance yourself by bringing the hands to the floor. So see how you can position yourself here. If you can hold balance just like this or just use your hands on the floor, bringing, pushing the knees apart. And then we do Bastrika here. Exhale and begin. Inhale, exhale. Again, choose your own pace. Make sure your abdomen moves. And then last exhalation. And then inhale for circulation of energy. Hold, bring the tongue to the upper palate. Focus on the tip of the nose. Pull the Mula Bandha pelvic floor up. And then change your concentration to the testes and the prostate. Or just think the names of the glands, your body, your nervous system knows where everything is located and your exhale slowly. Whenever the exhalation comes, you don't need to force the retention here. You can visualize a waterfall of light, of prana, of energy flowing down into the glands, strengthening the glands, nourishing. And then from here, you can, when your hands are up, you can lean forward and you can come up to standing. So stretch your legs and slowly roll up. And I'll go back a little bit so you can see, or we just adjust the camera. So you can see us in full glory. <coughs> Next one is Agni Sara which is pulling the abdomen in and letting it, let it come out with empty lungs. So what we're going to do is that we take a good inhalation and I just show you, show you the position so that as you exhale, you come down with straight arms on your bent knees. So you're really hanging in there. Your shoulders can come up towards your ears and then your tummy is free to move in and out. So we do it together. Come up, take a deep inhale, and then exhale, come down, bend your knees, keep your lungs empty, and then move your tummy in and out. And when your inhalation comes, come up to standing, take a deep breath, exhale, and we do two more rounds. Inhale deeply and exhale. Empty lungs and inhaling coming up. And one more on your own. You can also exhale through your mouth. And empty lungs, abdomen moving in and out, massaging the whole abdominal cavity. And then we just stand upright for a moment. Really standing straight and nice and tall. And as you stand, you can root down through your feet into the ground. You can let your crown rise into the sky. And you can open your chest a little bit. It's called power pose and there are scientific studies this is not hormone yoga, this is just science <laughs> researching on the connection of body and pose and what's happening in, in your system. It is shown that nonverbal power poses with open chest raise your testosterone levels. So just by standing like this in a power pose, it has an effect on your hormone glands.
So after this, um, we'll continue in the standing position. You're full of power now. <laughs> and we have a few positions where we always will do the same thing. We will interlock the hands behind our back and open the chest. So even more opening. And then we do concentration of um, circulation of energy after Bastrika to the adrenals. And then we bend forward, do the same thing. If your arms can be up, keep them up. If that's not possible in your shoulder joint, just hold them here. And then we do Bastrika and circulate the energy to the testes or the ovaries. So this is the first round. Then in the second round, we do it to the side in a pyramid pose. So this will be adrenals. In the forward bend, it will be the testes. Then we change to the other side. And then we do one more to the front, okay? So first round, your feet can be, you know, naturally hip width apart, interlocking your hands, opening your chest, and then we do Bastrika. Exhale and begin. Last exhalation. Inhale deeply, hold, tip of the tongue to the upper palate, focus on the tip of your nose, try to pull the pelvic floor up and change the concentration to the ad adrenal glands in the kind of upper back, sitting on top of your kidneys and exhale slowly. And then inhale one more time and exhale, bend forward here in this position. <coughs> if you can bring your arms up over your head, otherwise just rest the hands on the back. And then do Bastrika breathing. Inhale, exhale. Feel your abdomen move as always, this is crucial. Last exhalation. Inhale, hold the breath. Tip of the tongue on the upper palate, focus on the tip of the nose and pull the pelvic floor up, Mula Bandha. And now focus on the testes and exhale. And then inhale, bend your knees a little and pull yourself up, maybe with a straight back, coming back up, relaxing your arms. And now it's the pyramid, so your feet need to go wider apart. And then you turn your right foot out and your left foot a little in as you feel comfortable. And you can twist with your pelvis towards your straight leg and interlock again your hands behind you. Open your chest and do Bastrika. Inhale, exhale. Last exhalation, then inhale. Hold your breath, bring the tongue to the upper palate. Focus on the tip of the nose and pull the pelvic floor up. And again, focus on the adrenals, upper, middle, upper back, exhale. You can imagine these little red caps glowing on your kidneys, energized. And then exhale from here, bend forward slowly, keep your balance. If your balance is easily off here, just step your right foot a little out to the side so your stand is wider and you're stable. If that with the arms up doesn't work, you could also take the hands down besides your foot and stabilize yourself like this. If the straight knee, the pull of on your hamstrings is too much, bend your knee a little in the front. If you have a nice stretch here with the straight leg, feel free to keep that. And then we do Bastrika, exhale and begin.
last exhalation inhale deeply hold tongue to the palate focus on the tip of the nose mula bandha and then change concentration to the testes or the right ovary and exhale and with the next inhalation lift your head and with a straight bank you can pull yourself up and change the side turn the feet in the opposite direction face to the left and again opening the chest first round of bastrika exhale and begin And last exhalation, inhale, hold your breath, bring the tongue to the upper palate, focus on the tip of the nose, pull Mula Bandha in, and change concentration to the adrenals, middle, upper back, in German, neben Nieren. Exhale one more time here. And then with your next exhalation, slowly bend forward over your straight front leg, <coughs> the left leg now. Arms up or down onto the floor, stabilizing yourself. And then again, Bastrika. Exhale and begin. Last exhalation, inhale, hold, tongue to the palate, focus on the tip of the nose and Mula Bandha. And again, change concentration to the testes, prostate or the left ovary and exhale slowly. Take another breath. And with your next inhalation, lift your head and slowly pull yourself up to standing. And then having your feet apart, we do one more kind of a standing cobra with wide legs, opening the chest, exhale and begin Bastrika KD. Last exhalation, inhale. Hold, tip of the tongue on the palate, concentrate on the tip of the nose, pull in Mula Bandha, pelvic floor, change the concentration to the testes or the ovaries and slowly exhale. Visualizing flow of prana like a waterfall of light flowing down to all the pelvic organs here. And then slowly release and then from here you can bend down and come onto your knees this is for those who, of you who are familiar with hormone yoga this is familiar to you we do maha asana i show it for the new newbies so in general this you know all these concentration techniques in the beginning it can feel like a lot and you think like this is the last time I did this this is too much <laughs> but just give it some time it's like I always say it's like learning to drive a car you know and shifting gears and gas and the brakes and looking over your shoulder and to combine everything and coordinate and now most of you will just sit in the car and just go and the same as <clears throat> with hormone yoga, just you learn it faster than driving the car and it's less dangerous. <laughs> so um, we do in this, <clears throat> we do um, a mudra. Um, there are different names for this mudra. I know it uh, as Brahma mudra. Um, I think Dina has a different name for it. Uh, you bring the thumbs in and you bring your knuckles behind your ears. So this is Brahma Mudra and behind your ears, I don't know if that has a name. <laughs> so it's really behind your ear lobes where the ears meet the skull kind of. There are your 
uh, your finger knuckles. The knees are kind of together. See how that goes? I'm never so sure how this is for men, you know, this pose with everything between the legs for us may be easier. Is that okay? It's okay, it's fine. I get the message, it's okay. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then it's like, we pretend to sit down to the left heel. We pretend to sit down to the right heel. We push the hips a little forward and push the hips a little back. So it's a lot of work in all the muscles running through the pelvis. And we just breathe normally here and try the movement for a few rounds. And it can become faster if you feel more sure about what you're doing. And when you sit down, you also bend down with your elbow to the opposite side. And it doesn't have to be the full movement. It's more like you pretend to. And then you can come back to center. You can release your hands for a moment, shake them out. And we do one more round with breath retention. So we had this in the warm ups already, right? We take a breath and then with holding, we do as many movements as we can. And when you need to exhale, you finish. You can come into a child's pose or sit back or whatever. Take a moment to relax. Hands, thumbs in, in the fists, behind your ears. And then we take inhalation to hold the breath and move. And when your exhalation comes, you just stop. And maybe you want to rest for a moment in a child's pose. Take a few breaths here. And then you can turn over and lie on your back. And um, maybe you want to look first what we're doing if you're new. So it's going to be your wrists under your hip bones because the wrists are reflexology areas for all the pelvic organs. So um, we bring the wrists under the hip bones. And uh, those of you who are familiar, it's the third or last prana wave is kicking the buttocks, which is increasing libido. And we combine it with bastrika breathing. So it's always one leg, one leg, inhale, exhale. So you can come into this position. And the most common mistake here is that um, there's so much enthusiasm to kick the butt <laughs> that it's becoming very fast, much faster than the breathing. So um, coordinate and synchronize your breathing with your movement. So the thighs are staying um, vertical and it's just the lower legs flopping um, down and coming back up alternately. Or to, alternating Lee, something like that. <laughs> we exhale and then we start with Bastrika and the right foot comes down first. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And if your heel is not reaching your butt, don't worry, just do it in a way that works for your body. Your right foot kicking is inhaling. Your left foot kicking is exhaling. Also moving your abdomen. And last one. You can bring the knees to the chest. Keep the hands under, inhale, hold your breath. Focus on the tip of the nose. You can do Mula Bandha, bringing the pelvic floor in and change concentration to the testes, to the adrenals. You can also bring it to the head as we usually do in menopause, maybe the brain and exhale. And then we bring the legs up and we start with the left foot inhaling now this time. Exhale and begin. Inhale left, exhale right. And 
last time, kick your butt hard. <laughs> and then again, bring knees to the chest. Keep the hands under, inhale and hold the breath. Tip of the tongue to the palate, focus on the tip of the nose. Do Mula Bandha and change concentration either to the testes and prostate, ovaries or to the brain, flooding the brain with energy. You can already see all your glands shine. And then usually we uh, release this pose, everybody together. So it's bringing the feet to the floor first, step by step. You can lean the knees into each other and only then you lift your hips a little to take out your hands from under your hips and bring them to the side like in a relaxation pose and feel this massage effect on your wrists. And we do a, a little yoga nidra here to purify the nadis of the arms and balance the thyroid gland. And you can focus on your left hand staying in this position and imagine you're inhaling through the left hand and the wrist is shining and it flows up the arm the breath is reaching the throat and the throat is shining and then your exhale flows out through your right arm and it purifies and flushes all the nadis the energy channels washing out all the impurities to the right wrist and out of the fingertips. And another inhalation comes in through your right hand. The wrist is shining up the arm, your shoulder and the thyroid gland in your throat is shining. And the exhalation flows out through the left arm, purifying all the energy ch channels. Also cleaning the wrist is very good for carpal tunnel syndrome, flushing out all the impurities here. It's like alternate nostril breathing through your arms. So again, inhale through the left, wrist is shining, thyroid is shining, exhale through the right. Flush the nadis with light. Inhale through the right, the wrist is shining, the thyroid in your throat is shining, and out through the left arm, again, flooding all the nadis with light, with prana. Do one more round in your own pace. Going from side to side, using your concentration, maybe visualization. Using the power of your mind. And then finishing off with exhaling through the left whenever you are there again. Breathing normally. And then you can, from here, bring one knee into your chest. Maybe take the right knee, hold it with your hands, and then pull yourself up to sitting. And we are ready for half forward then, Janushish Asana which usually is our first asana in the hormone yoga practice here. It comes fairly at the end. And I sit a little back. If you uh, like a cushion um, for some um, elevation of your pelvis, to tilt your pelvis forward, then feel free to sit a little up. And if this knee is hurting or you cannot bend forward in this position, you could also bring your knee out to the side. Or even if you have knee problems, just take the leg out away from the other one. You want to bend um, forward over a straight left leg or towards straight, depending on your hamstrings. And if you can, uh, because we have so many experienced practitioners here, you can take 
um, the big toe with index finger and thumb and the rest of the fingers on top of the other toes. So this is your left hand on your left foot and the right hand goes to the front and then you stretch your foot forward. So when you breathe soon, <laughs> you can use the foot as a lever to bring you up and pull you down a little bit. So if you cannot reach your foot, just hold your shin and you can still do that movement. But if you do this exercise with the breathing for the first time, you might just want to focus on the breathing because that's most important. Being down in the forward bend, relaxing your neck and then inhale and exhale, normal breath to start your Bastrika. Inhale, exhale. Feeling your abdomen move as you breathe. Last exhalation, staying down and inhale, hold the breath, tongue to the palate, focus on the tip of the nose, do Mula Bandha, squeeze your pelvic floor and pull it up, and then change the concentration to the testes and the prostate or the left ovary and exhale slowly. You can come up and if you have um, the proportions and the flexibility you could try to bring your right heel towards your scrotum if you have a scrotum <laughs> so this is a very common thing also in sitting positions for advanced pranayama to press the heel into the pubic bone here so if you can do that we do another round like this, bringing the hands to the foot or the shin. And if you want to do the bouncing, you feel free to do so. Exhale and Bastrika. Inhale, exhale. Last exhalation, staying down. Take an inhalation and retain. Tongue to the palate. Concentration on the tip of the nose. Mula Bandha. And then concentration to the testes and the prostate gland or the left ovary and exhale. See the glands shine. And then with your next inhalation, you can stretch up. Exhale, the arms down and then change sides. Bring the right knee up, stretch it out and left. And we do an easy pose first. So you can try out what works for your leg. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, bend forward. Grab your foot if you can in the fashion that we explained. Stretch the foot forward. Exhale and begin. Inhale, exhale. Last exhalation, staying down. Inhale, tongue to the palate. Focus on the tip of the nose. Pull up Mula Bandha. Change the concentration to the testes, prostate gland, or to the right ovary and slowly exhale. And then you can inhale, stretch forward and up. For a second round, you can pull your heel in closer if that works, really pushing it, but it really depends also on, on your um, proportions the upper leg and the lower leg and inhale arms up exhale coming down relaxing your head and again exhale bastrika begins inhale exhale <laughs> And feel free to do it without the movement, just concentrating on the abdomen. 
Last exhalation. Inhale, retain. Tip of the tongue to the upper palate. Focus on the tip of the nose. Mula Bandha. And change concentration to the testes, prostate, or the right ovary. And exhale slowly. And then inhale, stretch forward and up. And exhale, arms down. So the um, next one I show you again first. It's um, Surya Vedana, but with a different leg position, as you usually know from hormone yoga. It's with a butterfly leg position. So for some um, bodies, if you do butterfly, you get compression in the back of your hips, and that's uncomfortable. So if you feel that, you could cushion um, your thighs so that your legs rest on a cushion. That could be an option. And then um, I show you the position. So what we are doing in this exercise is we are activating Pingala Nadi and we do Bastrika through the right nostril only. So we will always close the left nostril and there's a sequence of what we do <laughs> to get there. And then we do Bastrika and we do circulation of energy to the testes and ovaries. And uh, when we've done that, we do another like gentle inhalation and then a strong exhalation where we stretch back, empty the lungs and pull the abdomen in and up for Udhyana Bhanda. Trying to suck the abdomen in and creating a pull on all the tissues and ligaments and structures in the pelvic area. And then we do it again and we use the other hand to close the nostril. So if you're there, you can stretch your arms back and we stretch the right side by taking the left hand to the right wrist and pulling the right arm back, massaging the wrist again this way. And then we leave the right arm here, take the left middle finger, it's the finger of fire, and close the left nostril. And then we do Bastrika only through the right nostril. Exhale and begin. Last exhalation. Take your hand back to the right wrist and pull. Inhale and hold your breath. Tip of the tongue to the palate. Focus on the tip of the nose and pull up the Mula Bandha. Change concentration to the testes and the prostate or the ovaries and slowly exhale. Again, feel a wave of prana flowing down energizing the glands and then inhale slowly and release your elbows a little bit and then exhale deeply one more time empty the lungs pull back the arms and pull the abdomen in and up on empty lungs under the rib cage and when your inhalation comes you just release your abdomen and your arms and take a deep breath into your abdomen Feeling this massage, this, the diaphragm moving and pushing the organs down and moving everything here in the abdomen around. And then we change the side so you take your right hand to grab the left wrist, pull the arm long, and then it's your right hand with your middle finger and it crosses over. So it's your right hand on your left nostril. And you're breathing again, only through the right nostril, the Surya or the Pingala Nadi activating side, closing the left nostril, preparing for Bastrika through the right. Exhale and begin. <laughs> Last exhalation, take your hand to grab the left wrist, inhale and retain, tongue to the palate, concentration to the tip of the nose and Mula Bandha. And then concentration to the testes, prostate 
ovaries, slowly exhale. Feel your glands dance. Whatever you missed on New Year's Eve, now your glands can <laughs> cover. And we do a gentle inhalation, relaxing the elbows, and then a long exhalation. And when the lungs are, en lungs are empty, pull in the abdomen for Uddhyana Bandha. Suck it in. And when you feel inhalation comes, just relax the abdomen and the elbows and take a deep breath. And then maybe your legs are happy to come out of this pose. So slowly, slowly bring them up. And just let me take a peek. I think now we are sitting up so you can roll to your side. So usually if, if you would be new to the practice, we would slowly, slowly build it up. But today, as we have so many professionals here, <laughs> we do everything. <laughs> So next one is for the thyroid gland. And this is a little bit um, also a challenging exercise concentration wise. So if, if you're new to it, don't be discouraged. Uh, but it's the one that is most balancing for the thyroid. So it's good for an over-functioning hyperthyroid um, condition and also for a low-functioning thyroid, hypo-functioning condition. Um, we sit comfortably. You could also sit in any other way, on a chair, uh, on your heels with cushions, two, three stacked on top of each other. You can sit cross-legged if that's fine. You can bring your hands in uh, uh, chin mudra or jnani mudra. So with your index fingers to the root of the thumb or just index and thumb touching. And I will explain it and show it to you one time before we do it together, because it has quite a few steps. You don't need to remember, but then you know what's coming. So it's an inhalation, pushing up the chest a little and bringing the chin down to the chest. Again, having the tip of the tongue on the palate. And then pulling Mula Bandha, your pelvic floor in. It's feeling a lift around the um, perineum between the scrotum and the anus or the vagina and the anus. And then you focus on your throat and slowly exhale, bring your head back. If your mula bandha relaxes and your tongue relaxes, that's fine. You are stretching now your thyroid area. And then inhale, it starts from the beginning. It's the tongue to the palate and the chin to the chest. You can join me now. Then it's pelvic floor up, mula bandha. And then you concentrate on the thyroid and slowly bring your head back as you exhale. And once the lungs are empty, do Udhyana bandha. Pull your abdomen in on empty lungs. And then inhale, release Uddhyana Bandha and bring the head again down, chin to the chest, tongue on the palate. Mula Bandha, pelvic floor up. Feeling your thyroid, exhale, slowly bring the head back. And when the lungs are empty, Uddhyana Bandha, abdomen in and up. Tip of the tongue to the palate, inhale, bring the chin to the chest. Push the chest out a little, then do Mula Bandha, squeeze your pelvic floor in. Feel the thyroid, exhale, slowly bring the head back. You can relax Mula and the tongue. And then abdomen in, Udhyana Bandha. Releasing the abdomen, inhale, tongue on the palate, and the chin moves down to the chest. Mula Bandha. Feeling the thyroid, slowly exhale, and bring the head back. When the head is back, abdomen in for Udhyana Bandha. Three Bandhas. 
tongue on the palate. Inhale, Jalandhara Bandha is the chin to the chest. Mula Bandha, the pelvic floor. And then feeling the thyroid, moving the head back with your exhalation. Empty the lungs and then do the third bandha, Udhyana bandha, abdomen in. One more round. Inhale, Jalandara bandha. Hold, Mula bandha. And bring the head back, exhale. And at the end of the exhalation, do Udhyana bandha. Try one more round on your own without me guiding, whatever happens. And then come back to a neutral position. Relax your hands, relax your seat. Take a couple of deep breaths. So this takes a little time to get it into the you know, right flow. Just think of these three bandhas, chin to the chest, Jalandhara bandha, pulling the pelvic floor in, Mula bandha, and then at the end of the exhalation, when the lungs are empty, the Udhyana Bandha. And you, know, you might notice when you do it on your own that an Ujjayi breath some naturally sometimes just comes with the breathing where the throat is a little tight and you're having this soft sound like the ocean waves. And, and this is not wrong. Actually, this is like an add-on, like when you're familiar with the flow of these three Bandhas, you can add um, ujjayi breathing with it and you can also hold um, the mula bandha and the tongue throughout but usually it's there's so much inner activity going on all these muscles that are working and it's easier to do it like one by one and just release the other one so um, uh, you don't get into an inner tension like when you feel like i i tense up uh, it, it's uh, it's stressful then just leave out one step and then slowly, slowly, it will become easier. Okay, so then we have Setu Bandhasana. So another one for the thyroid, which is usually not practiced uh, intensely when there's a hyperfunctioning thyroid, but it's activating the thyroid nicely and also uh, giving a little um, hello to the adrenal glands again. And we just do a normal like bridge pose um, in a flow. So having the feet comfortably apart, knees same width, arms beside you, the palms facing down, the chin a little tucked, nothing under the head, so you're nice and flat. And then inhale, pull the tailbone in and then slowly, slowly lift your pelvis, lift your lower back, maybe middle back. And, and the chin squeezing down to the chest because you want to a little bit here, um, massage the thyroid gland. Exhale, you slowly roll down. You can say hello to the adrenals. You can remember maybe where they are located, upper middle back, relaxing when you come down and with your next inhalation, coming back up, chin, to the chest, chest to the chin as much as you can and exhaling, rolling down, thinking of the adrenals as well. Nice, supple spine. Do two more on your own. Combining the movement with your own length of breath. And then when you have come down, if you have the proportions to grab your feet in the bridge pose, you can do so. If this gives pain to your knees, don't do it. Some people have long arms. <laughs> for them, it's easy. For others, it's really not very comfortable. So don't force it. And come back up into the bridge pose. Bring your pelvis up, your back up, and keep your chin tucked into the chest. And we do Bastrika here. 
So you exhale, you keep the position up with your hips. Exhale and begin. Inhale, exhale. Last exhalation, keep the hips up if you can and inhale, retain the breath, bring the tongue to the palate, focus on the tip of the nose, pull the mula bandha and then feel the thyroid in your throat and slowly exhale and wrap it into a beautiful golden light, healing light, energy. Take another inhale and then release your feet if you hold them with your hands so you have enough room to roll down while you exhale. And relax. And then you can either roll over to one side or grab a knee and come back to sitting for butterfly. Again, you could sit on something, on a cushion or a folded blanket, if that helps your hips to come forward a little. And how far your feet are in, you decide. So it should be comfortable in your knees and your hips. If your knees are here, don't worry. Just be in a way as you can be. Sitting and leaning forward as much as you can. You can also bring your elbows to your legs and push the legs down with your elbows. So open <coughs> the hips. So an idea or the, uh, I guess what Dina has in mind, like functionally, I would say, is to get a stretch here on the adductors also to um, bring some more flexibility into the hip joints. And if you get that better, if your feet are more forward, do that. So anyway, this should be. Uh, some kind of sensation here around your hip joints, pushing down with your elbows, if that works. And we do bastrika here, as you can imagine. Exhale and begin. Inhale, exhale. Abdomen out, abdomen in. Strong movement. Your pace. And then last <coughs> exhalation, stay here and inhale, retain the breath, tongue to the palate, concentration on the nose, pull the pelvic floor up, mula bandha. And then from the nose, send the energy down to the testes and the prostate gland. Imagine, feel, visualize the activation, the shining. Take another deep breath. <clears throat> and then come back up bring the knees up and then it's the last active one <laughs> then then it's relaxing time so last one is viparita as we also have in menopause and i just show you there's um uh, one variation that we um, don't do uh, usually in menopause, but we do here. So the variations are pretty much the same. Um, you could come up into Viparita, like resting the hips um, in your hands, and it's a little bit of a, an arched back. So you rest your pelvis in your hands and your legs are kind of at an angle. And then we do some variations here, foot flex. We do um, leg exercise like this, so half plow. We also do windshield vipers, opening and crossing. We do V for the pelvic floor earthquake. We do frog. <laughs> so we do a few of them. I just show, you, show them to you. And then there's one that we only have in the male practice. This kicking the butt here. Okay. So let's start with this one. If you have trouble keeping your hips up, you could have one cushion or two cushions and just rest your hips on the cushions and then do all the um, variations. That's fine. So we start with kicking the buttocks because we usually don't do this here. And then we do uh, one more variation in here and we are circulating the energy here to the pituitary gland. So you exhale, and then with the right foot begin, inhale, kick, 
exhale left. Inhale right, exhale left. And last exhalation, you can um, keep the legs straight up. Inhale. And tongue to the palate, focus on the tip of the nose. Pull in the Mula Bandha. And then focus into the center of the head, the pituitary gland, and slowly exhale. And make it shine like a bright star. And then we do the other leg with inhalation. So left leg will kick first with inhaling. Exhale and begin. Inhale left, exhale right. And last one, you can also bring the knees into the chest. Inhale. Tongue to the palate, focus on the tip of the nose. Mula Bandha. Concentrate to the pituitary gland in the center of your head, in the brain, and exhale and make it shine. And then we do one more variation. And you can, if you're on a cushion, you can come up if you like, or if you're up, you can come down on a cushion or stay. And we do, um, just to feel the pelvic floor, we do the earthquake. So you open your legs as wide as they fall to the sides. So see that they don't fall behind towards your head, but more out. So you have a nice stretch on your inner legs. And relax your pelvic floor as much as you can. Try to feel those muscles in your pelvis. And then with your bastrika, you will push like give pressure from the inside to the pelvic floor and feel it kind of vibrate or jump even. We start together, exhale, and then Bastrika KD. Last exhalation. Now, inhale, retain, tongue to the palate, focus on the tip of the nose, and pull in now. Feel the tension in the pelvic floor, how you can contract these muscles. Really pull them in as much as you can. And then focus on the center of the brain, pituitary, and exhale slowly, relaxing the mula bandha, the tongue. Take another deep breath. You can bring your legs up again as you inhale. And then bring your legs behind you a little bit so you shift your weight. You can relax your arms down and make a break with your hands. Or in whichever way you can safely come down from the viparita. If you're on a cushion, maybe you want to bring the feet down first and then take the cushion out. And then it's time for yoga nidra. So make yourself comfortable if you want to dim the lights at home. Feel free to do so. Cover yourself with a blanket. Whatever you need to be Nice and relaxed here. And I will take 10 to 15 minutes more in the class. If one of you has to go in time um, I'll send you the link to the video so you can see the full practice that we are doing today. So just uh, log out quietly if that's necessary, just that you know that 
it's already five past five. So we would have only 10 more minutes, but I would love to take the time to guide you through the yoga nidra and also at least one pranayama and anti-stress. So being on your back, you could have your uh, knees up and leaning into each other. You could also be just like in Shavasana, stretched out with your legs and arms, taking a deep breath and settling into your pose. And it's nice to start the Shavasana to again, use your hands and rub the hands together, like really strong rubbing and creating some heat and energy between your hands. Rub, 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 rub. And then place your hands onto your groins, your scrotum area, prostate area, wherever you can comfortably reach for the female bodies, the ovaries, and your groins. And feel the warmth, feel the relaxation. Just give some friendly awareness. And if your hands are happy here and you don't need any tension to hold them there, you can leave them. For me, it's always, I have very short arms proportion wise. So I have to, you know, really engage muscles to hold my hands here. So I prefer to bring them out to the sides again. So you choose how you are comfortable. Take a deep breath. Feel how your body starts to melt into the floor a little more and a little more with every out breath. You can let go. You've done all that active, like physical work, breath, work here. Now it's time to rest. And just use your mind to balance the hormonal glands more. even out, whatever is, maybe too much somewhere, too low somewhere. So the prana also distributes evenly throughout the whole system. And you can bring your awareness down to your left foot and feel the left foot as it's resting there. And in your mind, visualize a ball of light or a star, a bright star just above your left foot. And you're just breathing very naturally. And magically with your next inhalation, this bright star slowly drops down and sinks into your toes and into your foot and starts to move up to the left knee that's shining and then into the testes and the prostate and the ovaries. They are shining up through the chest and into the throat, the thyroid shining, the pituitary in the head is shining. And here as you exhale, the light expands very wide as you inhale, it draws into one strong, bright point of light. And then exhaling, it flashes down through the right side of your body, through the arm, through the legs, to the leg, purifying all the nadis of the right side of your body, flushing out any impurities, imbalances. And the whole right side is shining. And then the bright star appears on top of your right foot. And with your next inhalation, it slowly sinks into the right toes and into the foot and moves up, 
reaching the right knee that's shining and reaching the testes and the prostate or the right ovary shining and up through the chest and into the throat the thyroid shining and in the brain the pituitary is shining is lighting up like the brightest star on the night sky and with your next exhalation this light is expanding infinitely wide and then as you inhale it's coming into a very dense bright point of light and exhaling it flushes down the left side of your body purifying energizing all the nadis down to the fingertips and down to the toes and out And then you bring your awareness back to your forehead. And the bright star appears here over your forehead, hovering. You can feel the gentle tingling of the light rays on your skin, maybe. And as you inhale the next time, the star. <clears throat> sinks down and through your forehead into your head into the center of your head and again as you exhale the light expands so wide here and as you inhale again you draw it into one dense point of light and you feel down to the perineum the root chakra and as you exhale you flush and flood your spine with light and it flows down to your root. You inhale here and as you exhale, you let the light expand from your <clears throat> pelvis so wide in all directions. And then as you inhale, you bring it back together in one bright point at the root and then the concentration goes back to the center of your head and you exhale and again the light flows up through your spine and into the center agnya chakra the pituitary gland in the middle of your brain with your next exhalation again the light radiates out from here from your head into all directions and with an inhalation you bring it into one bright point of light bring the concentration back to the root and slowly exhale purifying the sushumna nadi the main energy channel in your spine and in the pelvis again exhaling the light expands Inhaling, the light contracts. And then vertebra by vertebra, as you exhale, it moves up, making each vertebra shine like light bulbs on a chain, lighting up and shining and shining one by one. Each vertebra shining and shining and shining until your whole spine is like a chain of radiant lights beautiful lights back up into the center of your head again the brightest star on the night sky the brightest light here shining your spine shining, the nadis in your body shining, your whole body is filled with light, the light is pouring from every pore of your skin,
You're a beautiful cloud of light. can feel the sensations in your body. Maybe there's warmth, cold. Maybe some prickling, some tingling. Vibration, nothingness, stillness. Maybe there's a smile somewhere in your body as well. And then when you're ready, yoga nidra comes to an end and you can feel the ground beneath you, your body touching the floor in different places. Feel that firm form of your physical body again. Take a deep breath. Inhale, feel your abdomen rise. Exhale, feel your abdomen sink down. And then slowly, slowly start moving your toes, your fingers. Start maybe rotating your ankles and your wrists. Move your arms, move your legs, do all the movements that feel good. Help waking up your body. You can turn over to the right side and just stay there for another breath or two. And trying to keep your awareness as much with you and inside, not using the senses to go out already, but staying within. When you're ready, slowly finding a seat, comfortable sitting position. For a gentle pranayama practice, which is all the same as in the normal hormone yoga practice that most of you know. So we start with calming pranayama, breathing in a rhythm of uh, twice as long of an exhalation. So you gently sit with your spine as straight as you can, your hands resting in chin mudra or jnani mudra, shoulders relaxed. Feel the weight of your pelvis on the cushion and your spine so tall, your chest wide. And then slowly breathe in and count on one, on two, on three. Exhale, count on one, on two, on three, on four, on five, on six. Inhale. On one, on two, on three. Exhale, on one, on two, on three, on four, on five, on six. Count on your own. You can also count two and four, or four and eight, doesn't matter. It should be comfortable. There's no um, struggling here, no nothing to achieve. It's more to keep that natural, relaxed rhythm of one to two. And really attaching the mind in a very relaxed way to the breath. Like a little boat flowing on a river just with the current. No effort. Just 
Just sit yourself into that boat and flow along, counting the breath. And then let's see if we can change into a square breath, starting with making inhalation and exhalation the same length. So maybe you count inhale on one, on two, on three, on four. Exhale on one, on two, on three, on four. And then introduce a pause after the inhalation on one, on two, on three, on four. Retain on one, on two, on three, on four. Exhale on one, on two, on three, on four. Retain on one, on two, on three, on four. Inhale on one, on two, on three, on four. Retain on one, on two, on three, on four. Exhale on one, on two, on three, on four. Retain on one, on two, on three, on four. In your own pace, you can count slower, faster. You can imagine you're breathing along a square, four sides with an even length, inhaling holding, exhaling, holding. Again, make it effortless, gentle. If you feel your breath becoming irregular or somehow struggling, change either back to calming pranayama one to two or just adjust the length of each phase a little bit. And then slowly come to an end and just let go of any counting, of any regulating. Take a moment until you feel like your breath is flowing on its own again without you. Being involved. Lean back internally and let the breath happen. You're just watching. Noticing the quality of your breath, quality of your awareness. Maybe calm. And then we finish with an anti-stress technique. And we do um, the one that is um, new in this practice. And it's very similar for those of you who are hormonyoginis, it's very similar to the Soham practice. So here in under pause, Dina uses the mantra Sat Nam. Sat is truth or um, reality, uh, which is consciousness, um, unconditioned and um, unlimited. 
and with no end and no beginning. <laughs> and uh, Nam is Nam, Name, Name. So it's the name of truth, the name of what is real. And it's a very beautiful mantra to use here, especially because the Nam is long. So we do a movement uh, where we use a mudra. Uh, and the mudra is that the middle finger crosses over the index finger and the other fingers are bent in and the thumb is resting on those other fingers. I hope you can see that. So middle finger crossing over index and thumb resting on the other fingers. And the arms go out to the side and we chant the sat. So arm, one arm is up. So they build like this, this long slope from one hand to the other. And when we chant the nam, the arms change the position. So it's very similar to soham here. You could also do soham, <laughs> but we do sat nam now. So I start and you can join me. So you need a long breath, long enough so the sat can be short and the nam can stretch out. And then you only move uh, as long as the nam sounds. Inhale. Sat Nam. Inhale. Sat Nam. Inhale. Sat Nam. Sat Nam. When you have it, you can close your eyes. Sat Nam. Sat Nam. Sat Nam. Sat Nam. Sat Nam. Sat Nam. Last one. Sat Nam. And relax your mudra in your hands. You relax your arms back to your thighs or to your lap. Take a moment, close your eyes and feel the effects of this practice. And then you can bring your hands together in front of your heart if you wish. You can let your forehead drop a little bit towards your fingers. And bow to yourself, bow in gratitude to have this wonderful body and mind that is able to practice. In gratitude to all who support you and what you're doing who inspire you, who care for you. And you can inhale for final Om and Shanti. say thank you.
for being with us. And it's already half, so <laughs> thank you, Rudra, <laughs> for staying longer. And I'll come forward to the screen and uh, you can go to gallery mode and say goodbye. Or if you have any questions, we have five more minutes for those who want to stay on, then uh, there will be another class here. So you can come to Yin Yoga <laughs> with Maheshwara <laughs> if you like to. Um, so just maybe let me know how you feel.